Right. When the original EVP question was asked, I noticed Mike and you immediately were like, no, 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 no. Oh, well, no, that he, he was, he's a skeptic, so we don't have to pursue that. Right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a skeptic like you are, my friend. So, Patrick, EVP. Dave, Dave, Dave. Um, in my own research that I have uh, conducted, uh, rather my own observations, um, to me it is probably some of the most compelling stuff that we can collect. And, uh, I'm hearing it right now. <laughs> did y'all hear that? Or was it just me? We didn't hear a thing, Patrick. Okay, I'm getting a CAT scan on Tuesday. Um, no, it's, um, we have, we have made some very, very, uh, very interesting recordings. Okay, the vast majority of them, mm, pretty questionable, okay? Um, but there are some recordings that we have made that really, really make you go, mm, and, and wonder. It, again, it is not con conclusive proof, but this is something that we can, we can record on, on somewhat of a fairly regular basis. And in, in my opinion, it does represent some of the, the best data that we have right now. And if you want to call it that, uh, I, I will be the first to admit that most of our data is pretty poor in paranormal research. All right, now you, you have a question, right? And I, you know, I want to ask you a question first. Do you consider yourself a skeptic or a believer? Very much believer. Which kind of represents the, what you're in your head, yes. <laughs> so anyway, what is your question to the dad? Well, um, okay, so Max Clark, you know, the physicist, Clark's constant, so on and so forth, he was told by his professors that um, science, physics had reached its limits. And as what do you know, he comes up with the black body radiation equation. And uh, he basically said that science advances no death at a time. That's correct. Right. Basically, right. Right. So what I'm saying is that uh, given, and, and of course, you know, Clark is one of the long line of people who have upset common paradigms. So what I'm saying is that uh, given that knowledge is constantly expanding, I and mean, it isn't tenable to believe that there's some frontier that is just simply outside of our reach as human beings, given our primitive neurons residing within our skulls? Yeah, that's like the argument they laughed at the Wright brothers, and well, yeah, they laughed at the Marx brothers, and they <laughs> <laughs> laughed at as a man to write. Uh, of course, there's unknown field science and unknown and whatnot, but that doesn't mean the particular thing you're believing true. And by the way, we should uh, dissect that word a little bit, belief in Skeptic. Skepticism is just a tool. It's just a scientific way of looking at the world. It isn't a thing. I'm a skeptic. I mean, I'm a. I'm not a Holocaust skeptic. Uh, I'm a, that makes me a true believer, I guess, or whatever. But uh, I'm not a, uh, a creationist. So I guess I'm an evolution believer. But uh, but that would be almost like saying, I, "Do you believe in gravity?" Well, I hope so. <laughs> it doesn't like fall out of a window. Uh, it's not something you believe in. It, it just is. It just it, it either is or it isn't. Committing a belief to would be something more like I believe in God or I, I believe in the Republican Party or whatever. I mean, that's sort of it's more of an emotional, psychological commitment to something that probably you can't really prove. Uh, and so it's important to make that distinction. Allison? Actually, I absolutely agree with Dr. Sherman. I have nothing to add to that. Skepticism is just a way of approaching a problem, it has nothing to do with this is who I am and what I believe because it's not a belief. And earlier when she was asking if your willingness to believe can alter something, well, skeptics are willing to believe. It's after the evidence. Oh, I, I have to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I just just in the past year, I was contacted by a person from the Skeptic Society, from the Skeptic Society of Florida, who wanted to discuss some experiments of mine that I did years ago. Hey, he, wrote me a, a long, we exchanged a long series of emails in which he said, well, this is basically what, probably what's wrong with it. I said, no, we took care of that this way. And he comes back, well, well that's probably what's wrong with it. They, you know, we took care of that. And he comes back, his last email to me, he says, well, I see from your website that you're a fiction writer. How can we trust you to be a scientific observer? <laughs> uh, there's a guy named Isaac Asimov from <laughs> so somewhere. Uh, Clark. Far, uh, there's a quite a few others. Um, <laughs> 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 a 
Yeah. Was that? Yeah. If you're gonna make a joke, share it with the crowd. Elrond Hubbard. 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 Why does this happen? Why is an experiment such as mine, the ones I've done, such as the ones that I was referring to that Barrel Ben has done, or at Behrman and Holland, why are these never taken with, as, as having any validity at all? Why does the Skeptic Society stand on the premise that is very similar to the position of the French Academy of Sciences in the late 19th century, which said, there cannot be any such thing as meteors, because there, those are stones that fall from the sky, and there are no stones in the sky. Yeah, well, but now we accept it, so clearly, if you had that kind of evidence, we'd be there. But you don't. We don't? Have no, you looked at it? You, yeah. you, are you familiar with Daryl Bain's work? Two, yeah, of course, I've read the paper. Uh, so there's two problems, Refused. I think, that, that are, are with it. One, data theory. One, I don't think the data is as good as uh, we're being told here. It's, it's better than chance, I suppose, but um, much of this research is very difficult to replicate. Uh, it it's, tends to be replicated by those who uh, believe in it. There's another research by Richard Wiseman that if you believe in a particular thing you're investigating, you're more likely to find positive results, which is why we need those kinds of blinds, double blind controls. Uh, so I don't think the data is as good as, say, meteorites, uh, and not even close to that. But, but even if it was, that's only the first half. We also need some kind of a, a mechanism for a transference of this energy source or whatever it is. So back to where I began with what this means for God or the afterlife or whatever. By the way, I'm often asked what my position on the afterlife is. And I'm for it. <laughs> I'm not for psychic power, though, because I do not want to know what people are thinking. That's <laughs> probably not good. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but what do ghosts represent? They're supposedly dead people, right? People, so no, six, necessarily. Not six necessarily. Million, so that's what most the average That's what the average person believes. The average person so there's been about six, there's about six billion people alive today. There's been roughly about a hundred billion who have ever lived, if we go back to, say, 50,000 years. Where are all those ghosts? What, this room should be a buzz in uh, electronic voice phenomenon and uh, uh, flashing lights and so on. So maybe there is no mechanism. So anyway, my point is we can speculate all day, but until there's some cogent theory of how the energy transfers, my coded DNA, my neural nets of memory get transferred into some other platform and carried on in the future after my body is gone, uh, then all of this is just in the realm of sort of metaphysics, and so we have that mechanism. So we should not believe in the existence of light, because we don't have the theory down pat. We don't have every... No, the theory of light is way better than the theory of ghosts. That's true. There is no science. To, uh, to uh, uh, dark matter, anyone? Over 70% of the visible universe is unaccounted for. It's mass. We we don't have... we have, it, The math is there. It says it's there. It's... Dark matter? Yes, galaxies have collided. Watchers and the real matter aside and behind it because of the refraction of the light through the dark matter, we can see this blob of dark matter that did through that. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's quite true. There's, there's debate about dark matter. Well, that that we, don't, we don't necessarily, we don't understand it, we don't have a mechanism for gravity. Yet we all pretty much accept that. But we've been